Hi guys, and welcome to part 2 of creating loops in Roblox Studio. So this is actually the multicolor grid that we had last video, but I've made some changes to it, and I've changed around the properties of the parts um, that are inside the grid. Also, I've added the function so that when you touch it, the character will die. So uh, the first part of this video will be about creating the original one. And then the second part will be making a couple of changes to turn into this one. Let's get right into it. Let's just delete the couple of scripts that I had before and add a new one into our workspace. I'm going to call this one random landscape. And just get rid of the print hello world. Now I'm just going to paste in the script um, in parts because I don't have very much time in this video and the last time I recorded it, it got to about 15 minutes long. Uh, so if you don't want to have to type this all out, then the um, all the scripts will be down below in the description of the video. So uh, make sure to look there if you want to. Now the first thing we'll be doing is creating three variables. And x tile length is how long the part is, the each, uh, each individual part inside of our 400 um, uh, part grid. Then uh, to make them square I've also set the depth of the part to 6. I have set the grid size to 20 so this means it'll be a 20 by 20 grid um, and uh, if we wanted to change anything about our grid uh, from how big the individual parts are to how many parts are in each row you could do this using the three variables here. Now we just need to make a couple of for loops and um, make this x grid index that we can refer back to and this means how many times the loop has run and this is for the x um, rows of our grid. Uh, we've said it's starting at 1 and by default it'll be going up by 1 each time and it's going to just keep on looping until eventually it uh, reaches grid size. So we've set grid size to 20 therefore the um, loop will run 20 times. This is the same for the Z grid index, but uh, this is for the Z axis of our world um, instead of the X axis. Okay, inside of our two loops, we have got a creating a part that's um, just local part, and then we've said that the instance.new is equal to a part. Uh, we've anchored the part, we've put the part into the workspace so that um, it will be in there when we uh, load into the game. We have made the part to block shape, we have set the colour to a random colour and make sure that it's from RGB if you are writing site yourself. Um, and RGB is just a scale of how much colour goes into the colour you're making up. For instance, uh, this is red, this is green and this is blue. And uh, say that I wanted a dark purple, then I might have a hundred of red and a hundred of blue. So I would set uh, the first value to 100, the second one to 0 for the green, and the third one to 100. Now, then we're setting position, and to do this we're setting a new vector 3, and we're taking the x tile length, which is, uh, which is what we set up at the top, and we're timing it by however many times the grid has run. Sorry, the uh, loop has run. So, say that um, it's run three times, then uh, it would be 18 studs, because 3 times 6, uh, it'd be 18 studs along on the x-axis, and it'd be um, always at the same height, because that's uh, 0 for the height, and it's exactly the same for the z-axis as the x-axis, it's just uh, for the z-axis of our grid instead of the x-axis. Okay, then we need to set the part size, and to do this I've just made a new vector 3, and we've called it the tile length, which we set up at the top, the z tile length for the um, z axis of our part, and then a random height in between 1 and 10. If we run this now, then you can see that um, you will have the multicolor grid inside of your game. Cool. Uh, now we're going to go about making this into a lava scape. Um, there's also going to be a quick challenge at the end 
for any of you people who want uh, an extra uh, to test your knowledge of Roblox Studio and uh, it'll, I think that everything inside the challenge will have been um, made inside this video so um, I can't wait to see it if you do make one so just post the link to the Roblox game down in the description and I will check mine. Okay so then I'm just going to rename this to Lavascape and uh, we're going to make a couple of uh, changes to the script um, starting off with the properties of the parts. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change the color and it's going to be for the red in between 244 and 255. For the green it's going to be in between uh, 40 and 60. And for the blue it's going to be in between 20 and 40. Okay, uh, that's all fine. And then we're just going to set the height so that there isn't so much of a difference between 4.8 and 5. Uh, then we need to. Okay, we need to make it so it's constantly changing itself. So to do this, we can add a while true do loop in our game. And then I'm just going to highlight all of our script and press Control X to cut it out and paste it back into the uh, loop using Control V. Uh, the way that we will be making it so that the grid is constantly refreshing itself is by uh, creating a new folder inside of our workspace and calling it lava and then building the parts up inside of the folder and then deleting the folder once the um, the loop has finished running. So uh, create a new folder and then delete the folder uh, for the create new folder we're just going to say local whoops, local folder is equal to instance dot new folder and then we're going to name this folder um, lava uh, we're going to make it so that the folders parent is the workspace folder dot parent is equal to workspace then we need to destroy the folder at the end so uh, workspace dot lava yeah, we named it lava, so workspace.lava, uh, and then colon destroy. So this is a built-in function to Roblox, a destroy function, so you'll need double brackets in the end of it to tell the, um, the script that it is a function. Okay, now I'm just going to make a couple more changes to our properties. First thing I'm going to do is turn cast shadow off. Uh, then we need to uh, can make can collide off. Collide off. This just means that the player can walk through it. Uh, then we need to what else? Uh, we need to change material. We need to. Uh, oh yeah, we need to make it so instead of going into the workspace, it goes into the um, folder. Workspace dot lava. Okay, so uh, part dot cast shadow is equal to false, false, false. Um, part dot can collide is equal to false. Part dot material is equal to enum dot material dot slate. Uh, and that should be working now. So let's just play our game and see what happens. The next thing what we'll be doing is we will be making it so that the um, the part, sorry, the the love will kill you. Uh, and to do this, we'll be inserting 
Oh gosh, whoops. So as you can see, however many times I said not uh, to have a weight inside of an infinite loop, I managed to uh, not have a weight inside of an infinite loop. So let's just stop that game and uh, quickly add a weight function 0.2 seconds. Okay, let's play this now and uh, see whether it works. Cool, we now have our change of grid, but as you can see, it doesn't kill us. Uh, so, what we want to do is we want to add a new part into our game, just a block. Uh, we want to delete the weld which will be inside of the part, and this means that we can change the size and position. We want to set the position to uh, 63. 1.3 and 63 and this will just be where the grid is basically uh, as if, if you use the same script and you don't make any changes this will be where your uh, grid will be in your um, game and then we need to set the size to 120 by 2.6 by 120 so this is uh, where our grid would be and it's the same size then we're just going to set the transparency up we're going to make it so that it's anchored and it cannot collide and the player will not see um, see this or feel it in any way it'll just be there and uh, we're going to add a new script into our game underneath the part and we're going to call this kill script kill script okay delete the print hello world and uh, then paste in or type out this code here. So we're making a new function we're calling untouched and if it's touching the object whoops. Uh, then we're setting a new variable on calling it h and basically this is just the humanoid uh, and we're saying if h then um, the humanoid's health is equal to zero and we're then saying that if the script's parent which is equal to the part is touched then we're calling the function untouched which is basically taking your humanoid and then uh, reducing its health to zero. Uh, let's play this now and you'll have a working um, lavascape or multicolor grid whatever you made um, and here we go. Now I hope you enjoyed this uh, as you can see our player does die when we touch it. We made functions, we used um, a tiny bit of events, uh, we used a lot of variables up at the top here, we used three loops, um, we looked at the destroy function, uh, looked at changing properties of parts, and quite a lot of stuff actually, so I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did then please do subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one.